people, like, like we did in the, the demos, is people like using these as their kind of scribbler, cleaner pads yeah. as well. So if you've got, you know, 50 sheets, it means you're not spending a lot per sheet, you know, it's, and also you're not going to damage the nibs on that as well. So people are still using these, although you can, you know, you can frame these. I mean, this is like a sort of older thing. It's been carted around a lot. It's not, you know, it's still reasonably robust paper. Yeah. You can still sort of float mount it and things like that. Um, but yeah, at the moment, there's just the 75 GSM, yeah. So, any, any other questions? No? <laughs> so, so, so basically, so I, what I've done is I've brought some examples of drawings. I've done some from a little while ago and some sort of within the last few days. And these are all ones that have been done really quickly. And so these, for the watercolour markers, are quite a good example of how you can make something within sort of 15 minutes and you're also kind of painting in a different way than you would with normal watercolors so with these rather than kind of you know making the color picking it up with a brush and putting it down it's actually like using this is probably four colors probably this is probably four or five colors and it's actually drawing straight onto the page so you're getting kind of uh if i give you a really quick example yeah, so I mean, the, I mean, this the, the the marker paper is 300 GSM, so it's on that kind of verge, that kind of cusp of whether you stretch it or not. I find that actually, you're not using vast amounts of paper with these because if you're going to be sort of putting a big wash on, you're going to probably use a tube paint anyway, and then you want to stretch it. But if you're just using these, I generally don't stretch it if it's especially if it's on a small scale. But I mean, what you can be doing is so I'll just do a small example. I don't know if you're kind of doing a kind of rough kind of nose type thing and a bit of a kind of bringing that in, a bit of an eyebrow. You can kind of get that in like that. So you're actually just drawing on rather than kind of painting with it and then you can kind of bring that colour up and it doesn't take much to actually get rid of all those lines. And then actually with some of them I've tried to leave the lines in there because it adds like a kind of, this kind of subtle sort of bits of folds of skin and things like that. So you kind of, when you actually get to using these, I mean, when I was using them, I was kind of mainly using them in quite a traditional way. But really, when you start getting used to them, you can kind of get some quite nice effects out of it. And then as soon as that's dry, you can kind of be embellishing it or kind of adding cross hatching and things like that as well. So I mean, that kind of gives you an example, but also, some people are using these watercolor markers just more like felt tips or like you would pro markers and stuff but you're using it on a thicker stock paper so whereas the pro markers you've still got 75 gs oh, there's sorry. sort of an advantage to the markers with uh, you know if you're doing a watercolor mm. you know the pencil sketch first you don't if yeah you're using the markers just not yeah the exactly yeah yeah absolutely i mean these are also so one of the things about these as well is all these I've done on transport. So all these drawings, all these paintings have been done on trains or planes. So that's part of the thing, you know, it's a bit like having pans in a way. And you can take them, you don't have to put them in a, like the plastic bag to go through as well, because there's no actual sort of milliliterage to this, even though it's water based and it's in a sponge. So, you know, I've never had a problem taking them through, um, through in hand luggage. So, I mean, the, and the great thing is you're not getting any wastage from them as well. Um, so this is an example of how I've just done a kind of like an abstract felt pen type drawing with it. But the great thing about this is it's, it can then be sort of used as an artwork rather than just a sketch because it's on 300 GSM paper. You've got quite a nice depth to the tone as well. This is a different kind of paper, so you've got slightly more streaks in it. Whereas when we did, this, did it on the marker pad, those streaks aren't there at all. You know, you get sort of a consistent block of color. Um, Did they work okay on, like, I know these are sized differently? Yeah, these are sized differently, but yeah. Regular, like, they do, so they do actually work really well on um, hot pressed yeah. as well, obviously. But then the, the more, the, the only thing is, is what you end up doing with these is sometimes you end up sort of pressing quite hard, especially if you use the fine point nibs. Mm -hmm. And because it's milled finer, it's a tiny bit more like a dye in terms of it'll kind of soak into a more absorbent paper. So that's why this, this, you know, this Cotman paper is really good. The marker paper is really good. These, these are actually different, but you can st still see that it's quite easy to pick up, pick up those colors, but you just got to be a bit more careful when you're applying them. Um, so the paper is important, but you can use it on any, any of those kind of papers. And these also do work 
well on um, on prime canvas as well because you could pick up the colour. You've also, because it's got some give to the end of that brush, it means that you're not going to damage it either. So it's the only one that you could damage over time is the, the fine point, but the, uh, the brush point actually you could use it on much more materials than the rest of them. Um, so yeah, and obviously they're intermixable all these as well, so it's some of them are the same pigments as, the, as actual cotton and professional watercolours. So say permanent rose, it's the same pigment as you get in um, the permanent rose in the professional range. Um, and, you st and like, you know, these three at least are all single pigment colours, some of them are, so you can mix lots of colours together before you actually, lots of these colours together before you hit brown. Um, so that's another really, yeah, so that's like a really nice thing about them. You know, I think they kind of remove the kind of confidence uh, you know, uh, people who might lose confidence with the brush, mm. you know, that it's probably good for that too. Really. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. I mean, it's that thing where people are used to drawing, but they're not, but, you know, the yeah. thing with watercolour is you've got so little control yeah. because you're kind of, and the paper also is a big, has a big effect on that as well. So you're using paper that's sized enough that, you know, you've still got quite a lot of control because it's letting that sit on the surface and it's not sort of dissipating into the kind of grooves and things. So you're doing watercolour in the most kind of, in a way that if you're not used to doing watercolour, yeah. it's great. So it's going to be great for young artists as well. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, exactly. And I mean, they do say that if these are, it's best to use them when they're wet because they're hard to pick up. But actually, I find that, you know, even when they're totally dry, you could still kind of pick up all that colour. It takes a little bit more working, but, you know, it's kind of, they're, they're pretty good. They work as if you kind of applied the sticks and things like that as well. Um, so yeah, that's like a, so the, the, and then this is kind of a more abstract type thing where it's got a mixture of kind of washes of colour and then just kind of little embellishments giving a kind of three-dimensional feel to it. Um, so the kind of the pigment marker that we did, the demo we did, the whole idea was that was laying loads and loads of colour on top of each other so that you realise when, you know, we put, there's probably 10 or 12 different steps where it's laying just a few different colours and by that point when you washed over all that with the blender, you've got kind of a real three-dimensional feel. But at the same time, you could use it for these, you know, you could use both the nibs with just sort of two or three colors, and you can get, kind of get something really quite graphic as well. Um, and I mean, this has a bit of blending, but the blending's quite subtle, so it doesn't have to necessarily be a really painterly thing where you're dragging that pigment around the paint, um, which a lot of people do like, and it's great for people who are doing you know, if you're, if you're doing sort of fashion illustration and things, it's great because you're making a kind of three-dimensionalness of that clothes. You could pick out the white underneath with a colourless blender by removing some of that colour. Um, and it feels sort of really natural. Um, but also you can make these quite graphic things. So it does work for artists and graphic artists. And because it's acid-free paper as well, even though it is thin, it's still, it's going to last, you know, 100 years or more as long as you, you know, don't leave it out in the sun or the rain. <laughs> and then... So, I mean, the, the pro marker and, um, and brush marker, uh, I mean, I know Ruth will probably tell you a lot more in detail about these. Um, so these, I mean, I don't use them so much in my own practice, but I, you know, I quite like them as kind of sketching tools and things for kind of getting ideas. If you can do something sculptural, you get like a really nice graphic look to them. You get kind of a quite soft edges to it. And these block colors, the sort of the best thing about it is that you can take a color and that you know you have all these streaks like that and then as soon as it dries as soon as that alcohol dries then you've got like a really nice solid block of color and then you add like a darker fine point around that Ooh, that's the brush I always do that um, pro marker so you know just as it dries you get that tiny bit of dissipate you know it dissipates just a little bit and that kind of gives it like really nice soft edges and then the brush so the brush is really similar, you know, it's still dye based and it's still alcohol based, so it's not, it's not sort of an artist material in terms of it's not light fast, but it's because it's on this sort of almost matte surface and the actual colour's really matte and you've got those dark colours, it's also something that you could scan, pho photograph easily, so it's a bit like gouache where it's really good for designers and that's kind of what it's, what it's kind of made for as well, even though artists do use it. And you can see that it doesn't, so, I mean, that's quite a lot of colour. It doesn't bleed through, but it does kind of stain the whole page, which is also quite nice in its own way. Um, and, you know, you can kind of, there's, there's a lot you could do with this. And then, you know, people used to, you know, I think they use it for spraying and all sorts of things. And I think Ruth will tell you more 
about how you can use it in craft as well. So I mean that's kind of like that's a really different product to the pigment marker, even though the actual pen, the marker in itself is sort of, there's some similarities. It's still alcohol based. Um, so that's a really quick run through. Is, a is it clear enough for you? Uh, because it's a lot of markers on the table. Uh, can you easily make the difference yeah. between the, the different markers? Yeah. Okay. It's important. Just maybe something just to remind the way that you are storing the product. These two markers are pigment, pigment markers. So you have to, to store it horizontally because otherwise you can get the pigment going in one side of the marker and then it can take time to reactivate the color. For those, they are not they are dyed products, so the alcohol based, so it doesn't matter the way that you are storing. But for those, it's very important to keep it horizontal. So in your store, and even to your client when you are talking to them to, to sell a caution, store it horizontally, it's very important. And that's especially because it's feeding off, this, all of these feed off a single sponge in the middle. So, yeah. so also that means that you're going to get as much sort of of the color as you can efficiently out of it as well, because you know, you, you, either end you're going to use, you're just going to use it until you finish that color. Um, so, yeah. Any other question? <laughs> we, we are here for you. <laughs> we are listen, we're listening to your question. You are... Or does anyone want to just scribble on <laughs> some pads? <laughs> Well, wow, 20 minutes feels like it's really quick, but actually, sort of managed to smash through it's like it. You're in a few on minutes. plastic here, so obviously you can do it like on overhead projectors. You could do it on over, yeah, exactly. You could do it on acetate. You could do it on glass. And then some of the, so like the alcohol-based one. Obviously, the watercolor doesn't really work on that. The binder's not going to hold it very well. But the alcohol ones do work really well on that. And the Pro Marker, they, people do that a lot with. But actually, these work really nicely. And you got to, they dry really quickly, obviously, on the paper. But then when you're doing it on glass and perspex, you're leaving it a little bit longer, but it's still, you know, drying quickly. And then you just, you can add up the layers. You can still get that same kind of opacity that you want to. Um, so you could do these kind of, you know, fake stained glass windows and things like that. And some people as well, are, they are using the plastic to make, to use it as a palette. They are mixing yeah. their color, preparing their color on the palette and playing with the colors that they are, they are just refilling the, the nib by just picking some, some drops and, and coloring. So that's a way, another way to, to use, uh, to use the color. Yeah, exactly. So you can also use these, um, these blenders. So if we take the white blender to so the colorless blender, obviously you're kind of slightly thinning the color because you're kind of just adding alcohol to it. You know, with the, uh, the white, you're actually kind of adding whites. You're adding titanium white to that. So you've got like a totally different color there. And then you can apply that. And actually that will go a little way, as you could tell, because it takes a little bit to then remove it from the nib. But it just means that then you, with these blenders, you can actually make kind of an infinite amount of colors. The other thing you could do that I didn't show before is it's a bit like the, um, so it's a bit like the blender from the Promark and a blender from the, and if you put water down on the page, you can give yourself more working time by applying, so I didn't ever actually clean this very well. Okay, I'll use the white, <laughs> but you can add that. And if you add it with the, uh, the colorless, that's going to take longer to dry than the actual color as well. So then you can then take another color and you could, whatever that is there, and you can add it on top. And that's going to give you some more working time. And that's going to give you sort of, it's, it's almost like adding a medium to your watercolor to get it working. And that's another thing that you could do with the uh, watercolor markers. These work with all the winds and newts and mediums as well. So you could use masking fluid. You could use all these kind of things as well. So it's not that they're just with the kind of paints, you could use them with everything else. You know, there's, there's a whole stand there and all those things can just intermix with this as well. Um, so, yeah. <laughs> Got to learn to speak a bit slower, I think, really. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Very slow motion. Slow motion. Yeah, I've learned the lesson. <laughs> What, uh, what we can say, it's uh, just as well, maybe on the, on the marker by itself, you, you get all the information that you get on the tube in terms of light fastness, mm -hmm. uh, the pigment that we are using, is it uh, mono pigment, is it, uh, what is the uh, light fastness? So we are, we are giving the, the, the same kind of information that we are giving on a classical tube. And you get the same, so on, you get the same on the watercolor markers. So on that too, just like you get with any of the other Winsor Newton products, you get this little square 
in there and that square when it's an open square means it's transparent yeah. and if it's a black square it means it's opaque, opaque and then if you've got a line through it, it means it's semi-opaque or semi-transparent so actually all these are actually transparent because it's watercolor um, but yeah and then you've got the permanence as well so it's permanence a and permanence a or permanence double a classified is classified as per, as a permanent and this and the only one that's actually aa is um the white blender because that's got titanium white in it as well um, so yeah and then also yeah you could see it because it's got the list of the pigments in it you can see that all three of these colors and quite a few others are all single pigment as well and that's the same with the um same with the pigment markers as well um so that's kind of useful to know um what, mm -hmm. what we can say as well in the range of the winter uh, winter newton uh, watercolor marker uh, there is a color matching with the uh, Cotman range in terms of colors, yeah. so you can you can find the same color, the identical color in the in the Cotman range, and some color of the professional range. So you can there is a color matching uh, as well possible. Um, what else? Are you going to bring it any bigger? Uh, as far as I know, no. Uh, but uh, we are we are uh, investigating to get uh, more more product on, on the paper pad. Uh, so it's internally we are working on different uh, solutions to get maybe heavier paper pads. But uh, in terms of size, I don't I don't think so. I'm not sure. I'm not sure.